welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to cover the whole of the oxidising and reducing agents topic. Visit my website now to download a worksheet to complete as you watch the video. First let's recap what you should already know about redox. We can use the mnemonic oil rig to help remember what happens during redox. Oil rig stands for oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Sodium is oxidised to sodium ions by losing the electron from the outer shell. This equation can be found on page 12 of the databook. It is written as a reduction in the databook. You just flip it over to get the oxidation. Sodium becomes a sodium 1 plus ion plus an electron. Chlorine is reduced by gaining an electron to fill the outer shell of electrons. Chlorine exists as a diatomic molecule. Therefore, two electrons are needed, one for each atom, to form two chloride ions. To combine the equations, the first equation needs to be multiplied by two so that they have the same number of electrons in each equation. The whole equation is multiplied by two before we can combine them. We combine everything on the left hand side of the arrow together and then everything on the right hand side of the arrow together. We can then cancel the electrons from either side and rewrite the equation. This final equation is the overall redox equation. The oxidation of silver to silver ions involves the loss of one electron. Silver becomes Ag plus plus an electron. Bromine is reduced to bromide ions by the gain of electron to the outer shell of each atom. Bromine exists as a diatomic molecule like chlorine, so two electrons are required to form two bromide ions. To combine the oxidation and reduction equations, the oxidation equation needs to be multiplied by two so that we have the same numbers of electrons in each equation. We can then combine everything on the left hand side together and everything on the right. We can then cancel the electrons and rewrite the overall redox equation. Pause the video now and write the ion electron equations for oxidation of aluminium, reduction of sulphur and the overall redox equation. Aluminium loses three electrons when it oxidizes to become aluminium ions. This is because aluminium has three outer electrons to lose to become a stable ion. Sulphur is in group 6 and requires two electrons to be reduced to sulphur ions of 2 minus. To combine the two equations, the electrons must be equal. The oxidation equation needs to be multiplied by 2 and the reduction equation needs to be multiplied by 3. This means that each equation will have six electrons. Everything on the left hand side will get combined together and everything on the right hand side will get combined together. We can then cancel the electrons and rewrite the redox equation. One final check is that the charge is balanced. There is no charge on the left hand side and there is a 3 plus multiplied by 2 overall 6 plus charge here and a 3 multiplied by 2 minus 6 minus charge here, cancelling out to give no charge on the right hand side. Ion electron equations don't always just involve ions and electrons. When other species are involved, there are a series of steps to take to balance, to balance them. First check the main element being oxidised or reduced is balanced. In the case of sulphate to sulphite, this is sulphur. 
which is already balanced. To balance oxygen atoms, water molecules are added. Each water molecule contains one oxygen atom. In this case, one water molecule needs to be added to the right hand side. This is to balance the four oxygens on the left and we've got three oxygens initially on the right hand side. We now need to balance the hydrogen atoms. Each water molecule added has two hydrogen atoms. We balance this by using hydrogen ions. Two hydrogen ions are added to the left hand side to balance the hydrogen atoms. Electrons are added to balance charge. These are added to the same side of the equation as the hydrogen ions. First, count up the charge on each side. The end charge on each side must be the same, but it can be positive, negative or no charge. Here we can see that on the left hand side, we have minus two and plus two, which is overall no charge. And on the right hand side, we have minus two. To bring the zero down to be the same as the, the right hand side, we need to add two electrons as they are each negatively charged. Pause the video now and try to balance these equations. Then identify if they are oxidation or reduction. Here we have permanganate ions becoming manganese ions. First thing we need to check is that our main element is balanced. We have one manganese on each side. That is therefore balanced. We have four oxygens on the left hand side. This means that we need to add four water molecules to the right hand side to balance the oxygen. Now that we've balanced the oxygen, we need to balance the hydrogen. We have eight hydrogen atoms on the right hand side, which means we need to add eight hydrogen ions to the left hand side. Before balancing the charge, we need to count up what charge we have on each side of the arrow. On the left hand side, we have one minus plus eight, which is plus seven. And on the right hand side, we have two plus. To be able to bring the left hand side in line with the right hand side, we need to add five electrons as these are each one negative. This will bring the seven plus charge down to be two plus like the right hand side. Because the electrons are being gained, this is a reduction reaction. The first thing we need to check here is that the chromium is balanced on each side. We have one chromium on the left and we have two on the right. Therefore, we need to balance that first by putting a two in front of the chromium ions on the left. We then need to balance the oxygen. We have seven oxygen on the, the right hand side. So we need to add seven water molecules to the left. After balancing the oxygen, we need to balance the hydrogen atoms. We have 14 hydrogen atoms on the left hand side. So we need to add 14 hydrogen ions to the right hand side. And now we need to balance the charge. On the left hand side, we have two times three, six plus charge. Whereas on the right hand side, we have minus two plus 14, which is a plus 12 charge. To bring the right hand side down to be the same as the left hand side, we need to add six negative electrons. Because these electrons are being lost, this is an oxidation reaction. In this final example, we need to check that our iodine is balanced on each side. We have two iodines on the left and only one on the right. We need to multiply this all by two before we can carry on. We now have eight oxygen atoms on the right hand side. We need to add eight water molecules to balance these eight oxygen atoms. This means we now have 16 hydrogen atoms on the left hand side. We need to add 16 hydrogen ions to the right hand side to balance these. On the left hand side there is no charge and on the right hand side we have minus 2 plus 16 which is 14. To bring the right hand side in line with the left hand side, we need to add 14 negative electrons so that both sides have zero charge. Because these electrons are being lost, this is an oxidation reaction. The electrochemical series on page 12 of the data book is a series of reduction equations. They can be used to write redox reactions. The reduction equation is left as written and the corresponding oxidation is reversed. 
This equation must lie above the reduction equation for it to be feasible. This is the anti-clockwise rule. This topic covers reducing and oxidising agents. Reducing agents cause reduction and are oxidised in the process. They tend to have low electronegativities and because of this form ions by oxidation to become positive ions. The group 1 elements are the strongest reducing agents. They are also found at the top right of the electrochemical series. Oxidising agents, on the other hand, cause oxidation and are reduced in the process. They tend to have high electronegativities and therefore form ions by reduction to form negative ions. The group 7 elements are the strongest and they are found at the bottom left of the electrochemical series. It is important to be able to identify oxidising and reducing agents from equations. The first step is to rewrite the equation as an ionic equation and eliminate any spectator ions. Remember, only ionic substances can be split into ionic formulae. So here we would have two silver atoms plus a chlorine molecule to form two silver one plus ions and two chloride one negative ions. In this equation we have no spectator ions. Take like species and group them together into two separate equations. Here we have one equation which only involves silver and one equation which involves chlorine. Using the rules that you have learnt, balance each equation. In this case, we only need to use electrons. We need to add two electrons to the right to balance the silver positive charge, and we need to add two electrons to the left to balance the chloride's negative charge. Once you have your two balanced equations, you can then identify the reduction and oxidation equation. As the silver is losing electrons, this is an oxidation equation. As the chlorine is gaining electrons, this is a reduction equation. Therefore, the silver is acting as a reducing agent, causing the reduction of chlorine, whereas chlorine is acting as an oxidising agent, causing the oxidation of silver. Pause the video now and identify the oxidising and reducing agents in each equation. The first step here is to write this out as an ionic equation. We have iron plus two hydrogen ions plus two chloride ions to form an Fe2 plus ion, two chloride ions and hydrogen gas. We can eliminate the chloride spectator ions from the equation. We then need to write out two equations. We have one which involves iron and one which involves hydrogen. We then need to balance each of these equations. To the iron equation, we will add two electrons to the right-hand side to balance the charge. And to the hydrogen equation, we'll add two electrons to the left-hand side to balance the charge. We can see that the iron equation is an oxidation equation, whereas the hydrogen equation is a reduction equation. This means that the iron is a reducing agent, whereas the hydrogen ions are oxidising agents. In the second example, we need to write out the ionic equation first. We have two potassium ions plus one sulphite ion. We have a bromine molecule and a water molecule to form two potassium ions, a sulphate ion, two hydrogen ions and two bromide ions. We can eliminate the potassium spectator ions. In this equation, we can see that we have three different things in here. We're going to write an equation which involves the sulfite and the sulfate, and also an equation which involves the bromine and the bromide. The water and the hydrogen ions will get used when we're balancing. For the first equation, we have sulfite ions 
becoming sulfate ions. For the second equation, we have bromine becoming bromide ions. For the first equation, it is not simply a case of adding in electrons. We can see that we have an imbalance of oxygens. So we need to add water to the left hand side. This uses the water that was in the equation. We then need to balance with hydrogen ions on the right hand side, which uses the hydrogen ions from the equation. We then need to add in the electrons. We'll have two electrons on the right hand side to balance charge. For the bromine equation, we have two electrons get added to the left hand side to balance the charge. We can see in the first equation that this is an oxidation equation as electrons are lost and in the second equation electrons are gained, so this is a reduction equation. Therefore the sulphite ions are acting as a reducing agent, whereas the bromine molecule is acting as an oxidising agent. Let's look at the final example. Here we have iron oxide reacting with carbon monoxide to produce iron and carbon dioxide. So we have two Fe3 plus ions plus three oxygen two minus ions plus three carbon monoxide to give two iron plus three carbon dioxide. This one is slightly trickier to write out. We have an equation which involves iron and then we have an equation which involves the carbons. Let's start with the iron equation. So here we have our Fe3 plus ions becoming Fe atoms. To balance this, we just need to add in electrons. We have a total charge of six positive on this side and no charge on the right hand side. So we need to add in six electrons to the left hand side. For our second equation, we have three carbon monoxide becoming three carbon dioxide. Whilst we would usually balance this by adding in water onto the left hand side and then hydrogen ions onto the right hand side, we can see from the equation that we have these oxygen ions here that we need to use. These get added into the left hand side as they are in the equation. This now balances the oxygen that we have on each side. We now need to balance the charge. We can see we have a six minus charge on the left hand side and no charge on the right hand side. So the six electrons that are gained in this first equation have been lost here. We can see that this first equation is a reduction equation and this second equation is an oxidation equation. The iron is acting as an oxidizing agent and the carbon monoxide is acting as a reducing agent. You can see from inspection of the first equation that carbon monoxide is being oxidised. It is gaining more oxygen, so we can pick out immediately that this is the reducing agent. Molecules can also be used as reducing agents or oxidising agents, as seen in the last example. Other examples include hydrogen peroxide, Hydrogen peroxide is used as an oxidising agent in bleach for clothes and hair. Dichromate and permanganate ions are strong oxidising agents in acidic solutions, so you will always see H plus in their equations. Carbon monoxide gas is used as a reducing agent in the extraction of iron from iron ore in a blast furnace. In a redox titration, a reducing agent and oxidising agent react in a redox reaction. The end point is reached when the exact number of electrons are transferred from one to the other. Indicator can be used to see the end point, however, potassium permanganate is commonly used in redox titrations and is self-indicating, so no indicator is required. The calculations for redox titrations are very similar to acid-base titrations. You require a balanced equation, in this case a balanced redox equation, and the data from a titration reaction. In this example, an iron tablet was crushed and dissolved in deionized water in a 250 ml standard flask. 25 ml aliquots of this solution were titrated against 0.00025 mole per liter potassium permanganate solution. The following titration data was gathered. Calculate the mass of the iron in the original tablet. 
So in the diagram, you have the concentration of the potassium permanganate solution in the burette, and the data from the table relates to this. And you have 25 mil portions of the iron 2 solution. You have the balanced redox equation here, where one mole of permanganate reacts with five moles of iron. We can see from the titration data that we have a rough titer followed by two concordant titers, which we will use to do our calculation. Step one of the calculation is to calculate the average titer. To do this, we will use these two values. The average titer needs to be in litres, so we will divide this by 1000 first. Step number two is to work out the number of moles of permanganate that were used. We do this by doing concentration times volume. The concentration is given in the question as 0 0.00025 multiplied by the average titer that we have just calculated. This gives a number of moles of permanganate as 5.05 times 10 to the minus 6. We now need to calculate the number of moles of iron that reacted. The number of moles of iron is 5 times that the number of moles of permanganate. We can see this from the balanced equation where we have a 1 to 5 mole ratio. So we will do 5 times 5.05 times 10 to the minus 6 to give 2.525 times 10 to the minus 5. This is the number of moles that was in 25 millilitres. We need to find the number of moles in the flask as this will give us the number of moles of iron in the original tablet. The flask is 10 times larger than the sample that we've taken so we need to take 10 times the number of moles in the 25 mil sample To give us 2.525 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of iron in the flask. The question is asking for the mass of iron. To do this we will take moles times gram formula mass of iron. There will be one iron atom for every one iron ion that is produced. So we take the number of moles 2.525 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by the mass of iron which is 55.8 to give a mass in the tablet of 0.014 grams. Pause the video now and try the redox calculation for this vitamin C titration. The first step in the calculation is to calculate the average titer. We need to take the two concordant titers here. Remember that your titer needs to be in litres before you carry on with the rest of the question, so divide by 1000 at this stage. The number of moles of iodine is then concentration times volume. The concentration is given in the question as 0 0.0625 moles per litre, multiplied by the average titer that we've just calculated. This gives the number of moles of iodine that reacted as 0 0.001125. We have a one-to-one -one ratio between vitamin C and iodine. That means that the number of moles of vitamin C is also 0 0.001125. That is in the 10 mil sample that we've taken. The number of moles of vitamin C in the whole flask will be five times larger as the flask is 50 mils. The question is asking for the mass of vitamin C. So we take moles times gram formula mass. The gram formula mass of vitamin C can be calculated from the formula in the question and is 176. If we multiply this by the moles that we have within the flask, we find that in the tablet there was 0 0.99 grams of vitamin C. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!